Is Zomato really profitable? Let's talk about the food delivery platform today and their two core profit reporting in the past quarter. Before we proceed with the story, we will request you to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos and please do watch till the end, as you will find details on how accounting works for big companies. And let's go back to the story now. Yes, two core profit, everyone is ecstatic. Entrepreneurs, investors, and other startups, everyone. They are gushing over Zomato since no one anticipated the business to become profitable so rapidly. Even the Zomato team acknowledged that earnings would not materialize for at least three quarters. It's a pleasant little surprise, then. You might be wondering how Zomato got here. It's not exactly rocket science, though. Zomato only needed to do two things, as its CEO Deepin de Goyle had before noted, increase profits in food delivery and reduce losses in the quick commerce, blink it, business. There are currently three important metrics for this business. The gross order value, government, is one thing. You may determine this by adding up the amount of money consumers have spent ordering food. This number increased 11% from the previous quarter. Yes, a portion of it could be explained by seasonality, given the school breaks, IPL, and other summer activities we saw in the first quarter of the fiscal year. But does that imply that more users are now placing food orders through the platform? Therefore, we examine something known as the Monthly Transacting Users, MTU. Currently, the platform receives over 17.5 million monthly active users on average. The fact that this number hasn't changed much, though, is remarkable. In reality, Zomato had 17.5 million monthly active users nine months ago. As a result, they haven't been able to encourage additional people to use the platform for transactions. And that's a little bit alarming. Investors must question whether the meal delivery industry has already plucked all of the available low-hanging fruit. Why do we mean that? At first look, the rates of online meal delivery penetration, at roughly 15 to 16 percent, appear to be fairly low. One could contend that a sizable market is still available. Now if you further break this down, you'll discover that the e-commerce penetration is already at 37 percent inside the high income category, more than 6 lakhs. It is immediately above. If metropolitan regions are already fairly saturated, Zomato will only need to discover creative ways to increase revenue from its current user base. Consequently, we arrive to the average order value, AOV. This is very crucial to monitor since if an order costs $200 or $400 to deliver, it still costs the business the same amount of money. However, the larger order value results in bigger commissions for them. Sadly, Zomato didn't break out this information for food delivery. However, it did mention a modest uptick. Around 407 was the amount in FY23. Therefore, it's likely a little higher currently. However, investment research firm Nomura also determined another thing, how frequently Zomato consumers placed orders each month. They want to see if the odd push alerts are successfully encouraging users to place additional orders. And their estimate is that the frequency has gone up from 3 orders a month to 3.4 now. What might this be due to? It might be Zomato Gold. As you can see, Zomato has gone through many iterations of its controversial subscription service. Gold was present. After that came Pro. There is Gold once more. This indicates that the first complete quarter of the updated Zomato Gold program, April to June, is Q1 FI24. Additionally, 30% of the Gov's food deliveries are already made by requests from Gold customers. If Zomato's suspicion is accurate, it appears that they have hit Gold this time. Literally. When you combine everything. You'll notice that despite the fact that we haven't experienced particularly strong growth, the food delivery industry has consistently been turning a profit in the background. 
Blinkit, a player in rapid commerce and loss-making delivery that Zomato acquired in June 2022, was the troublesome child. Back then, investors were not pleased. And the revelation swiftly caused the stock to drop by 30%. However, it appears that things are also finally improving here. In the last year, the government has increased by half, from 1,000 crores to 2,000 crores. The AOV has gradually increased to 582. And the contribution they refer to has significantly decreased. Consider this to be the profit the business makes on each delivery after discounting the expense of bringing goods to your door. And after accounting for additional processing charges. When expressed as a percent of the government, this is now almost positive. Perhaps a portion of this is because to blink its recent reduction in the compensation it offers delivery riders. The cuts were significant, according to a Medianama report from a few months ago. If Van, alias, a Blinkit delivery executive, informed us that when he was working with Blinkit earlier, when it was called Grow Furs, he was earning 50 rupees per order. When the company transitioned its name to Blinkit, its earnings were reduced to, on average, 25 rupees per order. Now, under Zomato's leadership, the earnings have further reduced to, on average, 15 rupees per order. Even Albinder. The CEO of Blinkit pointed out how they had a temporary business disruption in the month of April resulting from the change in the delivery partner payout structure. So, while this won't please gig workers, it'll make shareholders happy. And since there are currently only 4 million MTUs per home on Blinkit, as opposed to 17.5 million for Zomato, there is considerably more room for growth. In fact, according to Deepin de Goyle, he believes that in 10 years, it will be more significant to Zomato's stockholders than meal delivery. That wager is intriguing. Overall, it appears to be a good show on Zomato, don't you think? But we also need to reveal a small secret, despite everything, Zomato still lost 15 crores of money. Yes. A defeat. So, you wonder, what is the $2 billion profit that everyone is referring to? There was a tax clause that came to light, as Munna Control noted. Or a 17 crores worth of deferred tax line item. After making the necessary modification, we suddenly had a 2 crore profit. Consider deferred tax as a circumstance where Zomato may have previously paid taxes but is now able to credit those payments against a loss they have experienced. It's just how accounting functions. The big question is, can Zomato maintain its profits if they were generated by a tax gain? Well, most likely. Therefore, we'll just have to wait and watch how the narrative develops. So, here it is folks, all about 2 crore profit which Zomato reported past quarter. Please do like our video and we will see you in the next one.